Hi, today's special is dal makhni. Now dal makhni basically loosely translates to dal, which is lentils, and makhni, which is buttery. Well, technically I'm not gonna be using any butter in my dish today because we're making a basic dal, and you can elevate this dal into a creamy texture with a little extra cream and some butter. It's completely optional, or you can leave it as a completely vegan um, dish with uh, pretty much just oil, lentils, and spices, and all the aromatics that'll go into it. Now the first ingredient, most important two ingredients for this are the lentils. Now you get these lentils, they're actually called black lentils. That's what they look like. Here you go. Here's the black lentils. You get them in any Indian store. And this is kidney beans. You can get this also pretty much readily available. These need to be soaked overnight in three cups of water, completely submerged because um, we need to make sure that the beans have enough space to expand you will be discarding this water before you cook it. So the most important tool you're gonna to need to cook this quickly is a pressure cooker. Now without a pressure cooker, any kind of dal dish won't achieve the right texture and it'll take you forever to make it in a slow cooker or on the stove top. So any of you guys have one of those Insta pots, go for it. And if you're an Indian and you have a pressure cooker, which is actually a true so gift that comes for all of us Indian brides when we move away from India to any other country. So. I'm gonna start with a skillet, which has been heating on medium high for like a few seconds. And I have three tablespoons, two, sorry, not tablespoons, teaspoons of oil, any kind of oil already in here. And we swirl the oil around the pot so that it coats everything. I'm gonna turn my heat down to low while I work with all the other ingredients because splatter can happen and you wanna make sure that you maintain safety when you're cooking in the kitchen. So I'm gonna go ahead and get Exactly, one four teaspoon of cumin seeds and put that right into the oil. It's gonna start crackling, right? As soon as the seeds hit the oil, it's gonna start crackling. So we're gonna get right down to work now. These are chopped onions. This is a whole cup of onion and it's just chopped roughly. There's nothing special about it. And we toss it right into the pan. And since we have the heat on low, it's nice that we can actually watch the food being cooked the colors coming together, the flavors being emanated from it. So we just coat the onions in the oil. Now here comes my trick. This is turmeric powder. This is a trick that I learned from my mother on how to soften up your onions and make them caramelize for a curry. You take a teaspoon. I do everything with my teaspoon. My teaspoon is my best friend. I'm going to take it and dip it right inside that and I will measure out exactly just about two pinches of turmeric. Make sure that you purchase the pure turmeric from the stores. I always recommend people to take um, pure turmeric from uh, probably the grocery store aisles where you have the cormic spices all in the rack. They have really pure turmeric. Now, if you're going to an Indian store and picking up turmeric, just kind of, you know, make sure that it's one of the pure kinds because some of them just can be colored pop powder. So. so once we put the turmeric in, in here, we just let it swirl again so that the color gets distributed on all the onions and I'm going to crank up my heat just a tiny little bit to about medium low again go swirl 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 and then again crank it up to probably medium high again and we're going to shake that just a little bit I'm going to give this a second and while this cooks I'm going to show you the rest of the ingredients that we're going to be using for this dish so we also have the base for any sauce and that's uh, crushed tomatoes and that's about a three-fourth cup of crushed tomatoes and then I call this pretty much actually the trinity of Indian cooking especially curry we have the onions in there right already sauteing and what I have with me is chopped ginger and chopped garlic now when you combine onions chopped ginger and chopped garlic or even crushed or anything together I call this the holy trinity of Indian curry Without this base, your Indian curry is going to be incomplete, though there are a lot of versions of curries which use um, no onions and no garlic and just the ginger. But I somehow feel that this particular dal is not going to come together if we do not have these ingredients. So I can hear the sizzle of all the onions getting together before we put the aromatics into it. I'll show you the next bit of the trick that I got from my mom. So this is sugar. This is just any kind of sugar. So I'm going to use my spoon again. I always keep a whole couple of spoons handy in the kitchen because I'll be dipping it into different things. And I'm going to take about, again, three pinches of sugar. You think, like, why is she putting sugar in a curry dish? Is that supposed to be spicy? 
Well, the sugar is going to go right into the onions. And as I stir them in, it's going to hasten the caramelization process so that your curry is going to come nice and smooth. And without the onions, nice and soft, your curry is not going to taste the way it's supposed to. There we go. So we crank it off and we leave that in there. Now, the next thing that goes into it is a tiny, tiny pinch of salt. Now, what the salt is going to do is, I love giving this tip in my classes, is that the salt basically is going to make the onions sweat. I bet you've probably seen this trick in cooking shows or books and stuff like that, but to tell you the truth, that's exactly why they put onions, I mean, salt and onions together, sorry. But let's go on to the next thing. We're gonna take our aromatics because we've given our onions probably like about a few minutes swirling on the pan with all the ingredients and now we have to actually get the aromatics to bring their flavors out. So I'm gonna use exactly one teaspoon of chopped garlic and one teaspoon of chopped ginger. And we will give it a swirl. Oh my goodness like heavenly. Now, if you are somebody who feels that this flavor is a little too strong, you're more than welcome to put a lid on this and let it just sit. That's pretty much what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a lid right on these aromatics and I'm going to turn this down while I sit and chat with you about a few more things that I do around the kitchen. But the whole purpose of doing this video is basically so that, you know, people who have heard about my cooking classes and heard about what I do. You see all the pictures that I put on Facebook and on my page. And I talk about, you know, my connection with food, my stories, where I come from. Well, this is just a nice way to actually show everybody who follow my posts and uh, look forward to seeing what I'm up to as to how I conduct my cooking classes. Now, my cooking classes are very simple. When, when I teach with kids, it's staying to the point. The food has to be precise. It has to be measured. And it also has to go very quickly because kids are impatient. Once they start smelling all those flavors, they want the food and they want to eat it. So I try to make recipes that are easy to cook. They don't take that much time. The equipment required are very simple, basic things you would find in the kitchen. And um, some of the ingredients pretty much will be readily available. The other ingredients that we will be using today is I have my own spice blend of garam masala. Garam masala basically means a, a blend of all spices that are Picant, hot, not hot as in spicy as in chili pepper spicy, but just hot. And I have a, a spice blend recipe, which will be on, it's on my blog with as to what spices go inside this garam masala mix. This can be made in advance and stored in an airtight container and uh, kept pretty much for like six months without any issues. Uh, it will lose its intensity after six months though. So make sure that if you do buy any garam masala that uh, is available outside, Make sure you buy garam masala and not curry powder. Now here's the misconception that I need to solve. A lot of people keep confusing curry powder with garam masala. Curry powder is not even Indian of origin, trust me. Curry is an Indian word though, yes. But curry powder basically is an English invention which the Britishers brought while they colonized India because when they came to India and started tasting all the spices we had there, those were potent. Those went through their systems like phew, yeah. So they came up with a blend. So they used some of the flavors that were existing in the Indian spices, and they took some of the flavors that they were familiar with, and they also put a little bit of color into it. So turmeric is part of it. But the interesting spice thing that's inside the curry powder is celery seed, and celery is not indigenous to India. It's something that got introduced like way later, uh, you know, in the in probably in the whole culinary history. But celery seeds is not Indian. So technically speaking, curry powder is not Indian. It is something that is Indian. So always remember if someone tells you, oh man, I can't stand curry powder. Well, that's because curry powder is not even Indian. And it's basically an, exp it's basically an import. It came, from the, it came from the UK. That's it. So there you go. I've given you my spiel on masalas. Uh, I will recommend if you don't want to carry a whole store of garam masala or, you know, make your own spice blend. McCormick's uh, has a really good garam masala little jar. And you can actually get in the bottle. I'll show you what the bottles look like if I can find one in my spice cabinet. Looks like I ran out of all of mine. Well, McCormick's, just remember that. Now, while I was talking, our fabulous onions are ready. So I'm going to put my lid away. I'm going to grab my nice little spatula. And I'm going to give this a nice, beautiful stir. And I'm going to crank up the heat again. I keep going back and forth on low and medium because I want to make sure 
that all the ingredients come together without any burning or any kind of singeing or overcooking. It has to, everything has to come together perfectly and it will once we put all the ingredients together. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is green chili peppers that have been sliced up. Now, these are Thai chili peppers. They, they are pretty spicy, but once you put them in the curry, if you skip the cayenne pepper and just put the chilies, this will give you a hint of uh, heat, but not the heat that's going to burn your tongue. So because the curry and the lentils and all the tomatoes are going to basically absorb that heat and make it distribute. Now, if you do not want to add them, because these almost kind of like taste like jalapenos, you can skip this completely because in my recipe, um, I like to add options so that kids can eat this as well. And my kids can take a little bit of their, their heat, but not too much. So this is just two chili peppers that I basically just sliced up. You're more than welcome to skip this. This is completely optional. So I'm going to add this right in here. Give this again a nice stir. Now, we are making the base of this lentil dish. And we're going to follow it with the tomatoes. But before the tomatoes go in, before we wet this whole curry and make it into a nice little smooth paste, we're going to take my trusty little teaspoon. And we're going to measure out, not a heaped, but one leveled teaspoon of garam masala. That's what it looks like. Nice little spice blend. And I'm going to distribute it all around. I wish the video could capture the way these flavors are filling up my casino right now. But you're going to have to cook it to know exactly how it smells or how your kitchen will smell once you do it. And yes, uh, my house does smell like an Indian restaurant. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing because I'm far away from home and this is as good as a cure to my nostalgia. I suffer from everything from diaspora to nostalgia because I haven't been um, home in three years. So I try to recreate my home right here. All right. The next step is we're going to swirl this around. Keep going. Now as the spices toast up nicely over here, I'm really getting all my juices going. And I'm going to follow this with this nice little tomatoes. These are just crushed tomatoes. These are canned tomatoes. I try to use fresh, but sometimes... They're accessible. Most of my ingredients are from scratch. Tomatoes are pretty much the only thing that I use from a can. Uh, I try to avoid anything preserved, anything frozen, especially my beans. I haven't used for a canned or frozen beans in like a year or more than that, actually. And I have found uh, the benefits of using freshly soaked beans and grinding them in a pressure cooker is a must in your kitchen. There we go. Now you hear that little and all the flavors come together and we are still on the medium high heat so you can keep hearing that little go together okay and I am going to crank it up just a tiny bit more center my pan so that it makes everything cook evenly and I'm going to take my lid again and place it all right let's go back to more cooking tips because this is the unique thing about my cooking classes now you can actually you know pick up your phone or your ipad or something you know surf the internet go find a recipe go to a youtube video yeah of course i'm not gonna say that the youtube videos aren't great because it's a fabulous little channel uh, or a space where you can actually um visualize how something's being cooked but each each home cook has their own style they have their own uh characteristic it's the way you cook it's what you put into it for me Cooking is a uh, part of my soul. It's something that I've been passionate about since I was like 15 years old. And uh, the very first dish I made actually was a red lent uh, was a red bean curry. So it was basically a red kidney bean curry. And I still remember I was 15. I was at my grandma's house. Um, it was the holidays, and you know you relaxed. And one day I told my grandma, you know what, take a take a break from the kitchen. Mom's gonna teach me how to make uh, rajma curry, which is basically the curry. And um, I'm sorry, that's my 11 year old son playing his video games. <laughs> well, this is a house. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I told grandma to take the day, the night off and she's like, okay, you know, I'm all ready. What are you gonna make and stuff? And I said, yeah, I'm gonna make this. I already soaked up the lentils overnight and I'm gonna use a pressure cooker. And she was like, are you gonna cook with garam masala? Because she wasn't a big fan of garam masala, but she was very enthusiastic to try it because I was gonna cook for the first time. So there I am in the kitchen. My mom's like standing in the kitchen that my grandma had was like, Super tiny. I'll tell you the size. I can show you exactly what size kitchen she had. Her kitchen was just about as big. Starts from where my sink is and goes to my fridge. It's like a tiny little square. It was built like almost like it was cut into stone. 
uh, for some reason it was dark and it had all these cabinets and stuff and some of them were actually stone cabinets and they were in. So it was almost like they hollowed out a whole kitchen inside a little tiny apartment. And it was on top of a third floor in the building and we had um, a little deck sort of a thing. It's called a balcony facing out. So it used to give us nice ventilation when you're cooking. So we really didn't have any of those exhaust fans or any fancy equipment. And it was one of my most fondest memories, you know, spending my summers at my grandma's house, um, standing up on that balcony and looking down at the traffic below because we live right above, you know, in the city, right in the heart of the city. You could see trams and taxis and rickshaws and cars and buses and people and everything like walking all around and then that used to you know keep us busy for hours and this was the days before cable tv though i did um get introduced to cable tv in 1992 at their house because cable tv reached india even before it reached africa which is where i was when i grew up all right let's go back to our curry oh to our curry story i forgot the rajma well there i am cooking a big pressure cooker filled with rajma curry and guess what ding dong the ring the doorbell rings and i go there to answer it Turns out some relative of ours, this is the day because we didn't have phones back then. All the telephone calls that we had to make were downstairs at the neighbor's house and we would receive calls and messages. So no cell phones, nothing. So people just decided that, and of course, you know, visiting people was the way to socialize. It was what people did on a weekend. So we had a whole family of uh, relatives just, just showed up. It was the mother, father, and the three kids. And three, not kids, kids. <laughs> So they were like, oh, we can just drop by. And then my mom's like, oh, you know what? Guess what? Nitya's cooking, you know? Would you like to join us for dinner? And I'm like standing there in the kitchen going, what are you doing, mom? <laughs> well, in the end, uh, I had to just keep quiet because I'm this nice little Indian girl who's going to say yes to anything her mom says, especially in front of your grandparents, right? You're supposed to maintain some kind of decorum. At least that's how it worked in Indian households. So I said, okay. And I said, fine, uh, we'll do something. So... Grandma comes into the kitchen and she was like, all right, all you need to do is just add a little bit more water to the curry and then put a little extra rice on the pot and I'm going to send grandpa down to the store to go pick up some potato chips and probably pick up some vegetables for a salad and we'll, you know, rustle up something and make sure that we can feed everybody. And trust me, it's, uh, that's the way Indian houses run. Like if you were to come and visit me uh, unannounced, which is perfectly fine, uh, I will greet you in the best form that I can and I will offer you food, I will offer you hospitality and definitely you know uh, something to drink and that is how Indian households uh, respected the you know we call it Atiti Deo Baha which basically means that a guest is almost like you know almost like a god so you're supposed to treat them with utmost respect so anyway that was my story and then yes it did turn out okay because I under the guidance of my mom uh, I always learned how to make really good food so the food turned out okay the family members were happy they were excited they were like oh I've never tasted this food like this before it's so tasty it's so yummy and blah 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 but but long story short, um, my first experiment with cooking was a success. That's because I had a lot of help and I had guidance and I had people to kind of like, you know, take care of me in case I made a mistake. But that was the first uh, step. And I didn't even realize back then when I was 15 that right now, almost 40 years old, I will be so deep into cooking. It's not a joke. And definitely at some point in my life, I would like to go back to culinary school to probably get more expertise and learn my techniques though right now self teaching seems to be the way to go because that's how my life expects me to be all right here is our curry mix well today's video is more about me talking introducing you into my ways um at some point i will be investing in a good camera so that people can actually you know probably have an aerial view of what i'm cooking and not see my face and not see me jibba jabba but you know that's part of the package. You come into Tia's Cocina, you're gonna have to put up with my twittering. <laughs> okay, our masala mix, as we call it, is completely ready. So the next step that goes into it is, this is my optional thing. I love adding asafoetida. That's basically like a flavor enhancer that goes into dishes. It just helps um, balance out all the flavors. And then the another reason why we use asafoetida is it's actually a sort of like a gas relief thing because when you eat beans, you do tend to feel a little full up there. Well, asafoetida is a nice thing, but too much of it can go really wrong. So it's one of those optional ingredients. If you want to add it into the dish, great. If not, then skip it all together. But since I have it, I am going to put it in. Two pinches. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Stir, stir, stir. Now, as we get this base curry ready, I will advise you that you can make this in the slow cooker. So this is the process that you're going to maintain all the way until you get all these ingredients in there and I'm going to add a little bit of water to thin it out and make it like an actual sauce. 
this video will end as soon as I put all the ingredients in together and my recipe will basically have how many minutes you need to cook it all the way until to get the desired effect and any other add-ons that I will be doing it. But um, that's pretty much it. So there's our base curry ready. Now we're going to start. Well, here's some uh, of the dal that I had ready with me. I'm going to toss that right in here with all the juice and all the liquid that came with it. Put that away. And I have with me ready this dal which has already been cooked with already some water that, that it cooked in. So we basically called it the, the stock that the dal cooked in. And we will stir it around. And at this point, you will want to crank up the heat to about high because we want, to, we want this whole mixture to come to a boil. And now comes the time where we actually taste it as well. So I'll have my tasting spoons ready. And what I'm going to do is now comes the piece of resistance, the salt. So go easy on this thing, huh? This is one seasoning that if you put too much of it into your food, you can ruin the dish. Too less, you're fine. Why? Because you can always keep a salt shaker right there and shake it right into your food. Now, for those people who like super hot curry, you want it to be a little spicy, you know, burn your mouth and get a little excitement. Well, make sure that um, when you're having kids over and you give this dish, don't add the green chilies. Uh, but you could uh, use a tiny little skillet with a tiny little bit of oil, maybe a teaspoon, chop up a little green chili pepper, saute it and add it towards the end. And that'll basically be like a tempering and a little spice thing. Uh, do not add cayenne pepper in the end because what the cayenne pepper will do is if you add it at this point where you have all your dal and water mixing, it's going to go all right on top and just sit on the surface. It's not going to permeate into your curry. So the best bet would be to add chopped green chilies, uh, sauteed a little bit of oil, softened up right inside your curry and then you give it a boil. Still get the heat that you want. So I'm going to be a little liberal and I will add a whole teaspoon of salt in here. Before you start cooking anything in your kitchen, make sure you have all your measuring ingredients. You have your tools, basically. You need to have your cup measures, your spoon measures, um, to measure pretty much everything you're gonna need. Now, my curry is almost about to be done, and this is the part where we basically let it just boil until it completely gets into a nice mushy paste. Uh, a lot of people will put this into the pressure cooker and give it maybe one or two whistles so that it gets done faster. Now I do have the time, so I will be leaving it in my skillet covered on medium low and letting it just boil up. And once it comes to a nice boil, we already have a little bit of liquid in the dal right now because I did use three cups of water to cook those that three fourth cup of soaked uh, beans. But I am going to add an additional amount of water to this. So I'm gonna watch while I add this. So I'm gonna go find my cup measure. Ah, there you are. So I'm gonna take my half cup measure and I will be measuring out about a cup of water right into this because this is a very thick and beautiful curry that's coming along together. And I will do a taste test right now. Pretty delightful. It's got a little bit of kick just the way it needed it. And that's it. This is uh, my video of dal makhni. This was basically me trying to tell you how I cook and this is the techniques and stuff. And if you have uh, any kind of questions, please feel free to email me. You know how to reach me. Uh, find me on Cosina de Nitya and on Facebook, or you can email me, text me. Um, my number is also listed as well. And I also have another page called Nitya's Cosina, which um, also has a lot of my experiences and what I do. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Bye.